Welcome to The Good, The Scars and The Rugby, brought to you by Vodafone. This week I've uh, said cheerio and toodle pip to my two friends. You won't be hearing any of Scars or Mo's input on this week's show, but it's because I have been let in where they are not allowed to go. Stop that. Stop that. I've crossed the border into Wales and I'm here in the beating heart of Welsh rugby. We're in the Vale. This is a resort that also has an elite training facility where the Welsh men and the Welsh women prepare when they're in camp. This facility is where everything happens. And today we'll get a private all access tour hosted by the man himself, coach Johan Cunningham, and hear more about how they've managed to deliver the results they have so far here in this TikTok Women's Six Nations. And then we sit down for a little chat about pretty much everything with three of the first women to ever get a professional contract to represent Wales. A front rower, a scrum off, and a centre, just for balance. Here's Johan. Hi, Johan. Hi, how are you? I'm well, and you? Good, yeah, good, thanks, all good. This is my first time here, uh, and you organise sunshine. It's always sunny here. It's always yeah, sunny? Well, maybe. I've, I've got to say, out of um, all the times I've been to Wales this year, I think yeah. it might be my first time going for it. <laughs> Thank you. <Thanks. laughs> Where are we going? Yeah, so this is the National Centre of Excellence. This is our home base where we train. Um, every morning, the players will come through here. Uh, this is obviously a reception with, with Paul, um, or a cat sometimes, and uh, it's a good warm welcome. And then as we enter through this, this section here, you've got uh, change rooms on the right, and then if we enter here, this is our team room. This is where we spend all our time together, really. And it says Women's National Squad Only. Yeah, it's uh, the <laughs> VIP. Uh. So basically, you walk into the room, and there are two iPads and a scale greeting you right at the yeah. door. Yeah. This is not normal. This no. is not an average workplace. What do you do on the iPads? So it's um, daily monitoring, so players will, will have their picture up there, will click on their face, um, yeah. um, how they're feeling, how they've slept. Um, body soreness, scores, mm -hmm. um, so all that input is, is taken in by a uh, sports scientist and then they'll weigh um, and then they'll head over to do some maybe mobility, sit and reach test here, uh, they'll do um, a bit of a knee to wall test. Knee to wall. Uh, so that's just to see where, where the players are and how they're feeling. Uh, we've got a bit of a memory wall then which is something we want to keep building so um, this was sort of our first campaign together. I you know, can see these in 2021. Then we went through to become professional players. Then we went on to TikTok Six Nations. Um, and this is a bit more of it for the sort of Six Nations together. So this is the scrapbooking you do when you're not coaching, sitting and this selecting is all I your. Do, uh, I don't do anything. Your... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you did you personally select the pictures? No. Um, <laughs> Hannah, Hannah uh, John, our team manager, is brilliant. She picks some, some, some pictures up. Of, Gets uh, all of the memories. Yeah. Aww. So, yeah, that was a good game where um, there's an engagement at the end, which is, uh, which is great. Hannah Jones' yeah. engagement on the pitch. Beautiful. Yeah. Some so, amazing memories. Yeah. Why is this really important for you right here as you get in? Uh, it's, it's what the players see first up, so it just reminds them of the journey we're on and the journey we, you know, we continue to do and um, some good memories and good times together. I think that's important. And plus the hard work that we've done. So we, our pre-World Cup build-up was about um, G.I. Jane really. So the, the movie from the 90s where we just themed our month, where we worked hard together, where we went some sun dune running, some wrestling work, uh, some work in um, sort of off-site we were in river cold water stuff just to pull us together um, before we headed off to the world cup how many of them had watched gi joe before you did this none of them <laughs> none of them did <laughs> so, the so, I, so i had to sell the movie to them first but uh, uh, yeah so that's the, that was the thought going it but yeah small generation will get yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so when are you guys in here basically in between training the whole time in and out yeah uh, we'll have small meetings coaches will catch up with players players will do their own analysis at the back um, and, uh, and obviously just spend some time together really. Is this like a chessboard? Is this yeah. the, the rugby equivalent? Yeah. There's a rugby yeah. pitch 
um, with tape on the ground. Yeah. And where are the little pieces that go on the, well, on the pitch? Well, we, we use some of the, uh, the mobility um, foam rollers sometimes, yeah. and we just put them down and say, oh, look, there's a, there's a scrum here, or we need you to run here. And then you're this foam yeah, roller just here. just walk around, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, Tiny then, little demo pitch. Yeah. Love this. So we got, obviously, players chill out here. Break room. Obviously, uh, the brains behind everything here is Sean and uh, Mike, <laughs> a.k.a. Cheese. <laughs> Um, why cheese? Oh, why no. cheese, Mike? Oh, no. Mike, why are you called cheese? Yeah. <laughs> cheese smile, Constantly right? grins, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bit of a leaderboard, um, just uh, some of our test scores and uh, some information from our GPS as well. So, uh, so mm. Whose name is on there the most? Cecilia. Cecilia. Cecilia, everyone chimes yeah. in automatically. Yeah. yeah. How different is that and all of this to what you had two years ago? Oh, it's massively different, yeah. Um, so two years ago, we, we were based in Cardiff Arms Park where we play. And we had a bit of a room there, but not really a, a team space. Um, and then we progressed to upstairs, which uh, was a bit smaller than this. Um, so over the last two years we've grown significantly but also we've grown a performance team now with mm. 17 to 17 maybe 18 staff as mm. well as players mm. um, so the space has considerably grown which is great which is what we need so but it's, it's excellent now. you basically have a starting lineup of staff not far off <laughs> they won't make the team though <laughs> okay where do we go next so we'll head out to, to the barn or where we do most of our in in uh, in house training. Strictly no filming in this area. It says on the door. Um, so we we hold uh, meetings in here. We do walkthroughs. Um, sometimes we do some some hard hard grafting here as well. Some some tough sessions. Um, you know we the, the team themselves. The words on the around the the barn was was pulled together by the team. What we want to be known as. Um, so you know we want to respect and. Um, you know, we want to win, we want to be accountable and things, so... so What's DBAD? I'm not sure if I could say that. We're yeah. allowed to swear, it's okay. Oh, don't be I, a dick, that's it. There we so, go. Where do you stand? Are you down here on the So bar? we're here. Yeah. Um, so we tend to do a lot of our work in this area. Um, the white screen at the back there is where mm -hmm. we show some content or footage uh, to the players. There are cameras dotted around the Hool barn, so we can get live feedback to the players. It's constantly filming, uh, which is great. So then the guys who are sitting in the analysis room get that footage and can... Immediately, can send it straight down onto the screen. Uh, we, can, we can have live feedback, which is awesome for us as a, team, as a team to enable us to improve and accelerate our development. So it's been brilliant. That's a really interesting, I mean, you're coaching a women's team, but it's functioning the way that most people understand men's national teams to function. Yeah, you know, we, we, want, the, we want to provide the best opportunity for our players to, to be their best, mm. to, to, to develop quickly. Um, so having that tool, really, where uh, we could be doing a drill here, for example, mm. whether it's attack or defence or simple catch-pass work, and we could do something and go straight uh, right, let's have a look at it. So we can go straight over the screen and we can have that live feedback and it could be something small as in, oh, you need to be a little bit wider there mm. or get your hands up earlier. And for a player to see that, sometimes they feel it, but they have to see it as well. Ah, I get it. And then mm. helps them learn quicker. So this is the first women's team you've coached, right? Yes. How is it different? It's not, it's not massively different. Um, I. Firstly, I just I, I really love working with this team. Mm. Um, I, pro I suppose uh, when I first started working with them, it's definitely going into a bit more detail, as in um, why are we doing this? You know, the question comes back, but that's fine. That's great. That's that is exactly what we need as as a as a group. So they ask why, as opposed to just doing it harder. Yeah, 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 which is which is great, really. Um, but the relationship we've got now with players, the relationship we've got with individuals is really strong. It's really good. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. So, yeah. That's interesting. You were, what, under Wayne Pivak at Scarlet? I was, yes. I was, five years. 
how much did that shape you as a coach now that you're in a head coach position here? Yeah. yeah, it helped me helped me a lot. I uh, learned a lot of Wayne um, on how, how to work with people, mm. how to manage people, uh, motivate, um, grow connections. That was huge uh, with Wayne, yeah. So you talk about growing together a lot. What does that mean in a practical sense? Because you just mentioned growing connections as well. Um, why is that so important? Well, you, first of all, you've got to get to know each other. Mm. I think if you get to know each other and you know someone that's close to you, you care for them more, if that makes sense. Um, it's not just about the rugby, it's about the person. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our conversations would be more about uh, the, the player as a person first before we talk rugby. I think that's really important. Um, and then that grows trust, that grows care um, amongst everyone. And then when we do ask them to go to somewhere dark or it's hard or we have to have the tough conversation, you know, they know it's coming from a good place because mm. we want what's right for the player um, or for anyone that's in our group really. Mm. Um, so that's what I mean by growth. Um, and, and we, we go through tough times together, but we go through some good times together. So yeah. um, that's really important. Okay. Where are yeah. we going after this? Um, What's here? We will head up to the gym. Don't ever doubt me. When the chips are down, I'll always deliver. A little Tyson Fury on the wall. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of uh, motivational words. Um, but this is, this is the gym which uh, we use. Um, daily really. What's nice about this gym is big enough to, to have forwards and backs as one session which helps us on our big days where we can shorten our day a bit more um, and get, get the hard work in here but also have the luxury of going out to the barn so yeah. we could do something, come out, do some skill set work um, and, and come back in in between sets so it works really well. We saw Cecilia Tupilato's name all over the boards out there in terms of the numbers. Um, there's one th thing it's it's one thing to really be delivering the numbers in the gym but who is the person who leads the pack in terms of the intensity in the gym yeah there's, there's a few actually um gwen crab loves the gym and she's very good in here uh, lisa newman is a phenomenal athlete and uh, oh, it's got excellent um, olympic lifts so the power cleans the snatches um she's excellent at that um fionn lewis as well uh, really good in the gym uh, but cecilia is outputting some fantastic figures and uh, and it's only the start, you know, she's, she's, she's young and, you know, her training age is quite young, so her potential is, is enormous. That must be the most intimidating thing, the fact that she's not yet 20. Yeah, exactly. So it's exciting. Oh, it's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so this is where the, the hard graft. Yeah, so this happens. is where we do our hard graft. Mm. Um, we, can, we can pop upstairs where we do some work on our contact zone or our contact craft, which is something we do. Uh, which is on like a judo mat. A so judo mat. Way, um, I will show you. This is our sort of contact craft area, really, where we'll do a lot of work on the mat. Um, just the dark arts, you know, like being able to get off the floor quickly, uh, manipulate the bodies to put them where we want them. Um, some conditioning work up here as well. It's quite, quite, can be quite a tough place, it's quite warm. Sweaty, uh, but it's great to get some quality contact work in. This is where we do that. It's almost like the mezzanine of the gym, if you're listening to this and you're trying to imagine it. The gym downstairs has this double volume atrium, and on top of it there is what I would describe as a place that you'd be able to grow orchids because it's quite warm in here, <laughs> even though today it's cold outside because it's got skylights and a really big mat where... I'm guessing a lot of the forwards absolutely get to flex. Yeah, yeah, this is where we, you know, see uh, who's king of the ring or queen of the ring, really. Uh, and that's what we do a lot of work on. And it's, um, it's good fun as well. It's good fun. One on one. One on one, two on ones, um, competitions. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good. It's actually good fun. Who's most impressive? Uh, Cecilia. <laughs> I feel like we're going to say that name a yeah, lot of times. She's good. Um, Gwen, Gwen, uh, Gwen Pulse is good as well, so the props are strong here. Yeah. Kelsey's really good. Yeah. Um, Donna Rose is excellent. Uh, she's injured at the moment, but she's really good on, on, on the mat as well. As, I'm trying to think of some backs that are, that are in there. They mm. enjoy it. 
nines are feisty, you know, Kira, Fionn, they enjoy it. <laughs> um, but no, it's just, just good. It's a good opportunity where we can work on some of the craft work, really, um, in a controlled environment. It's a big old place, this. Yeah. Oh. Oh my goodness. We have just stepped into the hottest, driest place it must be in the entire UK. Yeah. This is unbelievable how different this is to out there. Yeah. So this is our um, altitude chamber. So we can simulate conditions that have um, obviously low oxygen in the air. So if we go, go and play in altitude, uh, we can simulate that, but also we can simulate heat. So we can get up to 34 degrees in here. Um, and we can really put the girls to work on the bikes. Um, we can get other equipment in here that can be a real tough session, which exposes them to, to situations and conditions which possibly we can't do um, in South Wales. I've heard that you are a nutter because you do Broncos with the girls. <laughs> do you do this in here as well, in the, in the altitude chamber? Yeah, sometimes we, um, we set a challenge. So we'll say, we'll go, we'll have a good training weekend and we'll say at the end of the week, okay, management are in, or staff are in as well. <gasps> and it could be players, we staff, or they could pick one of us if they want us to join their teams. Um, and then we just go, go Do hard. they pick you? Some pick me, yeah. some don't. Um, <laughs> some, some pick other, other members of staff and um, strength conditioning staff. Because um, it's, it's fun, it's competitive, it's, um, it's good. I heard that you were there and thereabouts with Alicia Butchers on the Bronco. Uh, at the start. At then, the start. And then I faded off, but uh, she, she's, she's fit and uh, um, yeah, it, it's just good. I think, I think if you ask someone to do something really hard, but then you can show as well that, that I'm with you, I think it goes a long way. And, um, that's something that we try to do um, a lot as a group, uh, especially in pre-season or maybe off, off competition times. We'll have a, um, every one day a week, we'll have everyone join in and do something. You know? Wow. So yeah. is there a coach you learned this from? Is there someone you played under that used to do this? Yeah, uh, Simon Easterby was massive at that. So I played a little bit with Simon, but then Simon coached when I was at the Scarlets and Simon would uh, lead from the front sometimes, yeah, which was great. Brilliant yeah. to hear the girls talking about you with that level of reverence and respect because you're not just asking it, you're also getting stuck into it. Yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah. This place is, I mean, this is disgusting. I could never work out in this. Yeah, it's tough. Okay. I don't. I like being warm, but not in here. It's not nice. <laughs> Tell me about professionalization and this facility and the kind of work, that, the specialized work that you guys do now. Has it been... Is there a difference in how it's landed for the older girls or the younger girls? And um, who's taken to it better? Yeah, it's, 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 I think it's great. You've got, the, you've got the older players who have been around for 10 years yeah. or um, like Eleanor Snowsill, like this is a, is it a 12th Six Nations, you know, yeah. where all this change has happened pretty quickly overnight mm. uh, in, in the space of, of two years. And, and now she's getting support on all facets of her program from nutrition to yeah. um, recovery etc and she's had a spike in her, in her second sort of life so yeah. to speak and because then, someone took the shackles off almost yeah you know yeah. And, which is great but then the younger players then it's sort of it's quite cool because they think oh this is the norm now you know yeah. this is what i get every time I, I i come to an international setup so uh, the older players do remind them all like you know how lucky they are and i think that's important as well yeah yeah, so important to just have a bit of uh, of that context and that institutional memory still yeah, hanging around. Yeah, all definitely. right, where are we going now? So once all the hard work's done, we tend to go in and minus 140 to get into the cryo. You say we, do you do this as well? Uh, I have been in once, but... And then that was the first and last that time? That was the last time, yeah. <laughs> They'll head into a chamber, which mm -hmm. is here. They'll stand in there for two and a half minutes and then they'll go into another chamber um, for another two and a half minutes. So it's like a, a gradual decrease in temperature, which is very, very cold. And then it'll, it'll rise up a little bit before they go out again. Um, and that really is a great help for them in their recovery, really. So it's quite uncomfortable for that, for that two minutes. And all of this stuff, I mean, Vodafone coming into this as the shirt sponsor for the women, this is not 
the women's team is not just an add on a value add to a bigger sponsorship deal. They are the shirt sponsor for the Welsh women's side. And you're smiling already knowingly <laughs> because this must have just absolutely elevated everything in a way that nothing ever has for the women's game in this country. It's awesome to have um, someone as massive as Vodafone to be mm. part of us. Um, they've helped us with monitoring apps and um, iPads to monitor, which has been massive for us in our, in our programming. Um, but also just look at being excited about the next generation as well and inspiring the next players and, and seeing what's coming through and helping with the pathway. Um, that's, that's been massive for us and it will hold us um, in good stead moving forward as well. So this is where, as it says on the wall, you build your victories. Yeah. Some good victories so far in this campaign. Yeah, we, you know, we're very pleased with the start we've had. Um, from a points point of view, it's obviously 10 points in two games, so that, that's exactly where we would love to be. Um, there's obviously still in the test to come, but um, as a starting point, but also we spoke as a group when we got together uh, before the start of Six Nations was to try and back up first and foremost what we did last year, mm. and that was obviously to get a win over Ireland and get a win over Scotland, so I'm pleased we've been able to do that. Yeah. Um, the next step now is to see where we're at in our development as we play the bigger teams uh, like England and France. What is the aim against England? What would be good enough? I think uh, looking at it from a coach's point of view, mm. looking at it from a performance is that how many tries can we score against England? Mm -hmm. um, how many opportunities do we create and convert? Um, we talk about closing the gap with England. I think we're in a realistic position to do that now, uh, and I'm excited by that. Um, so, so that'll be that'll be the, the the review and see where we're at. What's great? They come into Cardiff, um, which is I'm sure we'll give them a good reception and a good welcome. So, um, and on the day if we can we can really ruffle some feathers, who knows what can happen? You know. What is the aim for the campaign? Uh, realistically, we, you know, we want to do one better than last year um, and hopefully finish in the top two. That would be something that would be an, an amazing achievement for us. Um, win three games. You know, we only won two last year. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can get the third win uh, as a minimum, that would be really good progress for us as a group. Over. England. <laughs> now, um, you know, like I said, the next two games are the challenge. We, we've got England home, France away, mm. and then Italy away. Mm. Um, but it's, you know, to get a victory over Italy, which we should have had last year, um, in, in, sort of in my opinion, is one that we've got to hopefully get across the line this year. Okay, exciting times. You are obviously also busy building towards that big, big one on the horizon, 25. Mm. Considering the investment that's taken place in the Welsh women's game over the last two years and where you are now, does the responsibility to keep on delivering in the short term and showing results weigh heavier than that kind of future prospect in the sky? How, how does that load bear on your mind? How conscious are you of the fact that you need to manage the perception that there needs to be growth year on year, that you can't just say, judge us on the World Cup? Mm. Yeah, okay, I think, first of all, Test Rugby and Test Rugby is about winning. Mm. Like, every time you take a field, it has to be about winning. Um, but, but also with us, it's, it's having one eye on 2025. Mm. It's growing depth, mm. especially in key positions um, where we've identified we need to find the next one or the next two uh, over the next two years, which is going to be important for us. But also, we want to keep the success because we want to inspire the next next generation of players. If they can see uh, a, a clear route for them, if they can see their heroes on TV, mm. then surely in two, three years' time, we'll have more players wanting to wear the Welsh shirt. And, and that's something that we want to keep doing as, as, a, as a playing group. Mm. Well, thank you for showing us around. The team room where the Brains Trust were, <laughs> the, the gym, um, that scary dark room, the yeah. altitude chamber, the cryogenics chamber. I mean, there is just such a good vibe around yeah. here. I'm so excited for what you guys are going to do over the next few weeks. Thank you. Pleasure. No Thank pressure? You. No pressure. Well, pressure's a privilege. <laughs> he says as he pulls a face. <laughs>
thank um, you. And thank you for letting us take over the pitch. No problem. The barn is now ours. A warm welcome to our new studio. No, it's not. It's not our new <laughs> studio. This is the good, the scars, and the rugby brought to you by Vodafone in the barn. And I am joined as uh, it seems like they never leave this place. <laughs> Three <laughs> Wales stalwarts, uh, Wales and Worcester scrum off. Fionn Lewis, thank you so much for joining us and bringing out Becky with the good hair vibes here as well. Oh, She's got two little plaits and the hair is all beautiful. And then Moe's Gloucester Hartbury Massive in... <laughs> Why are you both laughing? Because it's, it, it's just Gloucester. It's undeniable. It. You guys just roll around here and you've got a tiny yeah. slice of Gloucester. <laughs> just a little red chippy here just on the shoulder. Can to enjoy it. Uh, Santa Karen Lake, Hooker Kelsey Jones. Thank you for having us. Thank you for, Thank having, you for having, us. having us. So how are the bodies? It's a few mm. days post Scotland. How's your body? <laughs> so you just are one word so you put in what 80 minutes? 79. And 79. And <laughs> <laughs> felt like felt like 180. Not. It felt long to the point that I was looking over, being like, anyone, <laughs> anyone want to come and join me on here? <laughs> um, no, it was tough. It was very physical. Um, yeah, tough game and very sore. Paying for it. Definitely yesterday was nice to have a recovery day, but paying for it today yeah, still. As a hooker, how often do you do that? where you are just absolutely breaking yourself for 79.34 minutes. The way the game's growing, not often. You yeah. know, usually we, tr we try and get the bench out um, six, like 60 minutes in, 65, 70 minutes. But um, it, was a, it was a tough match. It was a close game. Um, yeah, just had to get through it. And we did. Great scrum to finish at the end with Fee picking up the scraps all and scoring. Oh. <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> I just, before we get into that fee, I just have to say, if you are listening to this or you are watching it and you've just heard the beeping in the background or what sounds like thunderbolts and lightning, <laughs> um, there are people gymming at the back of the barn. We feel sorry for that gym and what is taking place in there because we can feel it through the ground. Uh, but it shows you the levels of excellence being achieved right here. And speaking of excellence, Fee, you and your arm waving that scrum. <laughs> I was so invested. I was like, yes, keep it on. Is that exactly what you were saying? 100%. Yeah, I was literally like screaming at them to just keep going. And I was so invested. I was like, oh, gosh, the ball's out. <laughs> but um, I can't take any credit. It's all the pack doing insane work. And that was for 80 minutes. Mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, excellent. I'm not taking any credit. <laughs> that was such a good moment. Absolute yeah, peak stuff right there. Kieran, what is that like as a centre, playing with a pack like that? Do, is it a dream job or do you sometimes want to say, OK, guys, can we get the ball now? <laughs> no, is that, no, it, <laughs> no, not at all. It's, it gives us a platform to, to play yeah. off. So without go forward from the scrums or a steady platform, then we can't really do our stuff. We'd always be on, be on the back foot. So we're the same, like keep it going. If they get a scrum pen from that, it's just, well, it just sets us up to play in a better position in the field. So yeah, we're all behind them as well, saying keep it in, keep going, keep going, if they can, but they did as well. We'll try. Yeah. And you've got a dream centre partnership with Hannah. Yeah. Because it just seems like you guys have one brain and it just like, it's almost like <laughs> Ruby Tui explained it as a kind of telepathy when we had her on the, on the pod previously so beautifully. Go back and listen to it. I'm not explaining it really well. <laughs> but how does that work between the two of you? Because it almost seems like it takes one look and some of the yeah. things you guys pull it's, off. It's just playing with each other, getting the confidence. We know, I, I know how she plays on, I know she can cover up my mess as if like anything comes away or anything. So yeah, we just know it, it is that. I just look at her and she knows, she looks at me, I know what I've done wrong. We both own up to anything or we both cover each other's backs as well. So yeah, just just having the contact time together and know, know how each other plays. Yeah, um, I speaking, really enjoy playing with her. <laughs> she, and yeah, I know I can rely on her. If, like, like I said, if I mess up or I'm a bit too tight or something, I know she'll bust, bust a gut to get there and cover my back for me. Uh. Um, speaking of covering your back, has the Scottish authorities been in touch with you yet, Fionn? I don't think I'm allowed there again, <laughs> to be honest with you. That's the feedback I'm getting. Banned, I think. Banned. <laughs> Banned. Once and for all. <laughs> oh, so again. Nothing north of Newcastle for you ever no, again. No, yeah, the boundary's set, I think. <laughs> How I do play with some of these girls at Worcester. What is it th that just brings out why... You've now, two years in a row, been the person who's had the final say this time you guys were ahead, but that try just absolutely clinched it. 
last time around it was a try right at the death of the match as well. D d does, it, does that rivalry bring out the best in you? Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'm just in positions where I'm off the back of someone else's real hard work. Like last year's, you know, Alicia Butcher's breaking the line and I was on her support and then like on the weekend, you know, we were defend, we were defending that scrum and, and the, you know, reaction from the forwards to turn that ball over mm. and I'm just finishing it off. So, yeah, I'm just in the right place <laughs> at the right time. But, yeah, I think we had a point to prove in that game, you know, following on from the World Cup. You know, we, we knew that they felt that, you know, they could have, have won and, you know, we were on the win then. So I think we had a point to prove to, to show... How well we've done over these last few months has been such incredible hard work, hard work being put in. Um, yeah, and I think it was an 80 minute performance from absolutely everyone. So yeah, there was belief shown throughout, and you know we all knew on the field that you know we believed that we were going to win, and I don't think that changed for anyone. Last time around, a sheep was named after you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone named anything yet? Do, are we still Probably not good things. I bet. <laughs> 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 the Loch Ness oh, Monster gosh. has just been re <laughs> 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 terrorising the <laughs> <laughs> Scottish Loch <laughs> yeah. and the rugby pitches alike. Brilliant. No, I haven't yet anything yet, but um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Fiona, I think the lamb is, I think, is like a year old now. Or is she a cow? No, a lamb. I hope it was not It was a lamb from the photo that I yeah, saw. Lamb, I, say, I hope it lamb. wasn't a cow. Fiona Lamb is a year old now. So he does send me updates. I still oh, get updates to this day of like, Fiona's doing so well. I hope she's still alive and doing well. Oh, I didn't um, know about yeah, and she even sent me like um, a certificate of like, he's officially registered her with my name. Yeah, I, know. Oh. <laughs> I know. That's brilliant. Know. So Anything cool. named after either of you? Oh gosh, no. <laughs> not that we know no, of just no. yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, we have been asked by Honda to do our one word review. Now, last week, your colleague and friend, our own Natasha Hans, <laughs> set a new standard when we did our one word review with her, her creation. <laughs> no one's beaten it. No one's ever beaten that. That's a high standard. <laughs> Has anyone created a new word? Any risk of us um, just breaking no. boundaries here? Yeah, well, unless no. I've got my spell in wrong. I, no. <laughs> I think I kind of cheated though, to be honest. Okay. Well, do you want to do you want to kick us off then? Sure. So the one word thing didn't go to plan. <laughs> so I've gone front row show, and then oh, I've said no. that they're beasts. So is the one word <laughs> review beasts? Yeah, if you're really into the front row show, yeah. <laughs> With a heart on the end. <laughs> Just put it all as one word. And that's front row show word. beast. Show. <laughs> yeah, if you put a hashtag in front of it, no. you make it one but, word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, got to give them credit. Like there was like, you know, on the stats, like forty odd carries mm. between the three of them. Um, you know, like Gwen, P and Cecilia both had two tries each, and like. If you just look at the scrums and like they say the carry count between them, I, so I just think they deserve the credit. The fro show. The fro Ooh. show. Oh, there the we fro go. Fro show. Oh, oh go. yes. <laughs> but you must have rolled your <laughs> The fro show. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Give one. us yours, Kelsey. Mine was physical. Ooh. So so physical, and we speak about Scotland every year. We know it's going to be a tough match, but I think that's probably the most physical match we've e we've ever played against them. Um, especially up front. Yeah, that was a tough one. They, Very tough. Following on from that, they actually said, that, like, following on from, like, the stats and the, the, the game data that, like, we're all covering the most, like, metres and high-speed metres and that we've ever covered. And it's, like, even closer, like, the men's metres because how much workload is being, mm. like, is happening on field, which I think is insane to one, see where the game is growing in the intensity and also, like, how much we've grown as a squad showing that the intensity that we're playing at. And I think the way we want to play, you know, we're getting the rewards from it. Yeah, you know, the ball in play time yeah. is yeah. insane. Yeah, it was out. mad when we heard it, to be fair, because <coughs> I think back to New Zealand when we played them twice in the World Cup and that was some of the most intense rugby I've mm. ever played. And when they told us that, it actually it didn't feel as intense as that. So obviously it shows the growth that we've had as individuals as well to, to be able to sustain that and, and keep on pushing to get better as well. So, yeah, some crazy stats coming out. Physical. Karen, what have you got for us? One word review and one word battle. Oh, nice. yeah. I felt it was quite a two and fro game. Um, we had to stick in, dig in it, even though, like we said, kind of knew and believed that we could win, but we still had to work hard for it. And it was still, mm. still a battle through that backs and forwards, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because I that have a one-word review that is a name. No Ooh. pressure. Cecilia. Can we guess it? I was going to say, can we guess it? <laughs> Cecilia! Yay! <laughs> That's not fair. She Very deserves fair. the credit, 100%. Oh, bless her. Just go. She's, she's She's unreal. unreal. Can we just have a chat, please? Let's go. She's not even 20. No. She is unbelievable. And she's the most humble yeah. person you probably ever meet. How? How does she do it? I, I, think, I, she's, like, I think she's been brought up really well. She's yeah. got great morals. And she, like I said, she's so kind yeah. and humble. I think, yeah, she's got an incredible future. We're very lucky uh, that she's yeah, on our team. <laughs> it's, it's actually it's scary. Unreal. It's scary. Yeah. Like, what she lifts in the gym compared to us, yeah. like, compared to all the other girls. Like, she, and like Fee just said, like, she's got an incredible future. And that, like, she's 19 years old and doing what she's doing now on the pit, like, I just think it's, mm. it's scary where she can go and in the future. And she's, she's, I mean, she's one to watch now, so only yeah. knows what she's going to do in the future. We, the first try she scored in, on the game of the weekend, <laughs> we ran that move in training and, you know, oh, it gosh. was like, I was on the defensive <laughs> team, so obviously I didn't know what the call was. And I was just, Kelsey threw in and I was like, oh, great throw to Kelsey. <laughs> I looked up and as soon as running at me, I just went, I just screamed and went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and they showed it back this morning, like on the bloopers Your of the week. Face. I just sat there like, ah, she was running at me. And I was like, yeah, no one's stopping you. <laughs> we need to run this, no one's stopping her. And obviously she had success yeah. from it at the weekend. And I, I was sat on the bench like, see? And when I was screaming, I wasn't being dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she's, yeah, unstoppable. She's it's, it's really validating <laughs> to me that you've just said that on a camera because I said it last <laughs> week. And I think that people obviously look at me and go, yeah, well, you wouldn't be able to face this, Leah. No. But mm. at least you've now said oh, it yeah. as well. <laughs> Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I play with her club, yes, Ban yeah. International. There is no way yeah. I'd want to be tackling no. that girl. She's got some great lines as well. Yeah. On the pitch, I'm like Goliath. Off the pitch, I'm like yeah. David. Sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. Like it just makes you think how young she is, and then like, what is she going to be like when she's like 25, 26? Yeah. Like she, with a few more years. Yeah. yeah. Them. Unbelievable. And like yeah. I said, I'm just glad she's on our team. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't that kind of athlete just it makes me so excited that we have the professional support that you guys Absolutely. have now. Like she, she hadn't been in a gym until like a year ago properly, had she? Yeah. And she, like all this as she's come in, like we've managed to get this, uh, like have the professionals behind her. Yeah, it's, it is just unreal. Like I can't believe. She still doesn't know she her just, own And strength, she still does doesn't. She? Yeah. And like yeah. Fee said, so humble. Yeah. So, so humble. Doesn't realise how good she is. It's really exciting she's to see where she can go. And there's other people like that that's going to be, come under this professionalism now coming through, mm. catching them so young. It, yeah. Well, I can't wait to watch Welsh rugby in five years, yeah. six years, see where they are. And crazy good on the TikTok choreography as well. Very good. <laughs> yeah, she's good. And you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're your partner. Oh, right? gosh. I try my best, but I mean, you've got Cecilia that looks so cool, and I'm there just like trying to keep up. I just, yeah, I enjoy it. <laughs> How does it work? Because you're in her TikToks all the time, but she seems to rope everyone. I mean, her mom's in there. Yeah. yeah. All her family do it, don't they? I just feel like I can't tell her no sometimes. I'm like, of course I'll do it for you, Cecilia. <laughs> yeah. Of course. And the worst part is, is that she picks it up so quickly. And because she comes with the ideas of what TikToks to do, obviously she's already had a chance to look at them, like practice it. And then I've got to learn it in like a couple of seconds. And I'm like, Cecilia, I can't do it. And sometimes I get so frustrated. But um, no, yeah, she comes with the ideas. She puts it up there. We learn it. And then she just learns it so quick. And I'm there like getting it wrong all the time. Gwen Crab. Oh. She's a TikTok queen. Yeah, is she? she likes yeah, it. she's Gwen. She, 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 she loves it too. Yeah, she loves it. And she must and do about like eight that. a week. Easy. Oh, God, yeah, easy. A week? Yeah, yeah she does loads. <laughs> yeah. That is some serious she devotion and dedication. She does. It's like another full-time job, I swear. I think she'd actually want to do our social media. Oh gosh. I think if she could, she would. She really loves it. Can we talk about the hair? Oh, well, mine. No. <laughs> I was going to say, mine's all no. <laughs> I was going to say, who's no. right no. now? Oh, when? The wedding hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is going back a while ago, but she turned up one day for a Gloucester game with literally <laughs> Curls like curls. fully completely done, and we were like, "Have you just been to a wedding? Like, <laughs> was wedding in the morning, wedding. and then a game in the afternoon." We were like, "What on earth?" Um, so yeah, whenever she kills it, now we say she got her bridal hair. Her but bridal I think she hair. played well or something, didn't she? Yeah, so she's she, like, she, she I'm, kept she's it. convinced now. There's so wedding hair, so she's like, curls it, everything. But like, oh, I, it's just so much effort. Yeah. So we had 
We had Donna Rose and Alicia Butchers. Oh, <laughs> What's coming and next? Really <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a very good partnership. <laughs> at our little hospo at the Riverside Terrace before Brilliant. your game against Ireland. And there were tons of giggles, so many good laughs. The two of them, losing them out of the space at the moment because they're injured, that must be sadness because yeah. they just have such good energy about them and many stories. Um, we're really lucky that, like, Leisha's still in with us at the yeah. minute. Like yeah. Yeah. she's con in control and in charge of bringing messages on onto the field. Yeah. yeah. Um, like when she's playing, she's a massive leader, mm. um, and she's a massive part of the group, and she leads by example. So then, kind of losing that is who to have her still having her input through messages. Like if she's coming to tell me something, I'm like, okay, listening yeah. to her. Yeah. Um, and with Donna, like obviously because of where she's located, she's located in London, so it's easier for her to do a rehab in Saris. Mm. So she is a massive personality in the team. Yeah. She's <laughs> a massive joker. Um, yeah. Every time you come in, she's greeting you with a hug or giving you some cheek, cheeky compliment. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely miss her, but we're really lucky that we've still got Alicia yeah. like, tight within the group. She told us about her little performance at the end of the Six Nations last year as well. Oh, gosh. gosh. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh, oh we oh. enjoyed it too, I must admit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. I, just, I love the fact that there is that level <clears throat> of... Um, I almost want to see, like, say, vibe between you guys. Like, you genuinely have... When I watched you guys at the end of the Ireland game um, on the pitch in a circle with Kate capping down there and her yeah. dad coming on, oh, God, stop it. I was crying. crying. <laughs> <laughs> I look again to you like, It's just what to say. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, yeah. But I think, especially following on from the World Cup, like one thing we spoke about as a group was that we need to be as tight as possible mm. and being together. And that's one thing we've made more time for in this campaign is like, making more effort with each other and it's being as close as possible um and i think like moments like you know like kate getting her first cap that was huge and like seeing her dad come on is so special and like being together and sharing those moments i think is really important and i think only benefits like our performances because the tighter and closer we are i think the more connected we'll be in and 100%. Yeah. Only take us forward. Uh, but to be fair, I was going to say, I think that's come from having contact time here. So, yeah. like, having yeah. the professional contracts come in has made a huge difference. Mm. Like, not only, like, um, as individuals, like, for, like, recovery and little things like getting proper sleep at night, not worrying about waking up to go to a different job in the morning, but also that time that we can spend here together, um, you know, like, in our team room. Like, we've got lovely little setups everywhere that we can actually just enjoy each other's company as well. Previously, we used to come in in the evenings, get training done, and then shoot off as quick as we can to go and get a good night's sleep. Whereas now we actually have that contact time. Mm -hmm. We're here in the mornings, we get our rugby done. We have time there to chill in the team room, do some analysis. Like, So like even the analysis side of things as well, having conversations with people that you normally wouldn't, yeah. just allows you that time and contact time to get to know each other better as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and it follows on from what Karen said earlier about the partnership between the centres, you know. You, I think you've yeah. been able to have that because you spent more time together, yeah, like yeah, the definitely. contact time doing analysis together and things. Like the professionalism coming in has as benefited us completely as a team on and off the yeah. pitch, 100%. 100%. Even like um, one of our players, Carl Thomas, is expecting a baby. So like last week we threw a baby shower to like celebrate that. Like today we had an Easter egg hunt. Like we have little committees, like social committee, comedy club, culture crew, hygiene, so yeah. we, everyone's delegated a responsibility and like <coughs> we're always making time, like birthdays, you know, like make sure we got a cake and a card for everyone, just those little one percenters making sure that the whole squad feel valued yeah. and welcomed here and they make sure that everyone feels like a, that everyone's a part of the group and we're just making that extra time and I think that's made a massive, massive yeah, difference. Yeah. What's comedy club? Hmm. <laughs> anyone part of, anyone? No, I'm no, not. So I'm sure. sure. Um, they just got a responsibility to just, um, Make, put anything on that could be funny like every week we have bloopers <laughs> which um cecilia running at you <laughs> yeah that is that right one of them, example, yeah. that was part of today's bloopers yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah like funny things because we have a lot of like um like content and training cover or things like that and then they all go up on the screen and one of the cecilia running at me that was one of them today yeah. um it's just little funny things like that do like um, little jokes on the board, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Little jokes or little like little quizzes that we have to like just leave for the team room. Just yeah, little things that just keep yeah, us fun. Keep sort of guessing, bit of fun. One yeah, person that keeps cropping up is Sean. Oh, our back oh, coach. <laughs> he needs his own show, I think. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so clumsy. So clumsy. So I make clumsy. shows. I've never met someone like oh, him. So God. you mustn't say these things in front <laughs> he needs of me. His own, you need him on this yeah. sofa. <laughs> what there is he? he is. Sean! Sean! <laughs> 
<laughs> what, what, tell me about the most clumsy thing you've done. Oh, right. We went to That's the a Green Mile. We did this team bonding thing in the Green Mile. <laughs> and where we were, <laughs> it had this massive glass by folding doors. Sean was there, picked up his porridge, strutting off, boom, <gasps> straight at his forehead, imprinted onto the glass. <laughs> he went so hard and he went flying. Well, the oh, best part was, it was porridge. It's porridge, spit everywhere. <laughs> oh, the team erupted. And he just does this every week. He needs his own bloopers. Honestly. Falling over falling tackle over bags, in the meeting, falling over any equipment close. <laughs> what an athlete. An I said you need to be athlete. on this sofa. I mean, that's you one need way your to own show. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do oh, anything God. to entertain you guys. Oh, yeah, I mean, honestly. that's a team player yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. He was brilliant. He's one always of the singing. girls was watching him. We do like skills in the morning. Oh, and yeah. One of the girls was looking over and he was just on his own up here practicing on tackle bags by himself. He's on his knees like, oh yeah, putting a shot in. <laughs> <laughs> just by himself in the corner. Just, just yeah, he's on, own, yeah. He's, not, <laughs> he's, he's on his own. He is, yeah. He's, he's brilliant. always singing Funny as well, isn't he? Yeah, always singing. Always singing. He's got lovely voice, actually. Yeah, he's, I kind of like it, actually, yeah. but it's just constant. Constant singing. He, he's he's he really a vibe, brought he? good vibes. Yeah. Really good vibes to the camp, yeah. Who's the clumsiest of the players? I'd say Talia. Oh, oh yeah. Talia, strong. Yeah. Sorry, that was straight she's up. up yeah, she's clumsy. Didn't even have to think about that. Yeah, no, I didn't Potentially, uh -huh. she could be up there as well. Oh, Abby, Abby Fleming. Yeah, yeah. She's clumsy. Se second must be second row thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's yeah. just a lot of timber there. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. a lot yeah. to manage. They are. They always like tripping, standing on people, tripping over things. <laughs> oh, God. <Yeah>. Falling. <laughs> Lowry's pretty bad from a back's perspective. Yeah. Lowry Norfolk, she's also pretty clumsy. And speaking of people who make videos and reels the singing we have to talk about the singing me oh no <laughs> is this my anthem oh, oh, no. <laughs> I want to be, oh sorry God. i just gotta say are you doing this you're gonna actually. hear it the <laughs> yeah. only person the voice i pick up on when i watch it back is yours yeah i gotta I can say hear right, you my mother said to me yesterday you sound like a foghorn i'm like all right <laughs> but i'll take it i am proud, proud and proud i hold my emotion in all week for that moment and i don't care how i sound everyone in wales is hearing me whatever i am yeah, i'll make sure I they hear it. it i love it this is my favorite part honestly like mm. I try not to think about the game or anything. Like people are asking me, like, "Oh, how are you feeling about the game?" No emotion because I don't want to think about it. And then I get to that anthem, it all comes out. Um, and the, the coaches are like, "Oh, we don't know, we don't hear the anthem because we're up in the box." But in um, the dam, they're really close to the pitch. And the analyst came up to me like, "Gosh, Fionn, <laughs> bloody loud!" <laughs> Like I'm taking it. I'm yeah. it. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Then someone tweeted me saying, "Whose voice is this?" And I was like. <laughs> oh, God. It's me. <laughs> but I love how you're owning it. I am completely owning it. I am proud. I sound terrible, but I have no cares. I'm proud. I don't I think love I it. sound great, to be fair. I but. love it, mm. yeah. I think we had this pitch issue where, like, yeah, Gwenny P say. has got a great voice. Yeah. She's really delicate and high, and then I'm the other side of her. <laughs> <gasps> like, sounded like, a, actually, like a foghorn, yeah. So Lisa, who's in between us on the weekend, was like, I'm really struggling which person to go with. Um, yeah, like, Snowy said to me, me and Gwenny like to go high and low. And high. I was like, I'm just flat, yeah. so just monitor, <laughs> yeah. ignore me. Yeah. <laughs> you carry on, just don't be put off by me, because I'm yeah. the same, I've got nothing. Just go for it. Yeah. But I love that about an anthem. I feel yeah. like... Felt it. When I watch people sing anthems like, no, yeah, I no. Don't I'm, just, I'm like, why are you bothering? What is that? I don't think you this? can sing an no, anthem no. like that. You've got to give it also, the Welsh anthem, yeah. honestly, top tier anthem. I yeah, say it every I do time. The last thing I say before it starts, make sure this is loud. I say it every single yeah. time to us, this needs to be loud, and you just got to give it some welly. Come yeah. on, yeah, yeah. Give it to, yeah. Your favourite anthem that isn't <clears throat> your own? The French. Is it? Ooh. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Scotland's one. I learned it in a school play and no, I've known oh. it ever since, yeah. And they also tend to sing it. Yeah, yeah. with like, welly, with yes, some passion. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, devotion. Yeah. Scotland is a good one, but I, th yeah. I think Ireland, shoulder to shoulder. Fair. It's just a good little vibe. I quite like it. Yeah. In New Zealand, you did you saw the, the New Zealand anthem and the haka up close. <gasps> that was insane. Yeah, how good? The second time when we kind of challenged oh, and walked yeah, towards yeah, it. I've never felt the feeling like it. Because of yeah. their expression changed and I was like <laughs> <laughs> But it was surreal. It was insane. Yeah. Like the atmosphere and like obviously the crowd reacting to us also challenging it. Yeah. It was insane. If you asked us to describe that in one word, I actually could not choose a word for you. It's yeah, surreal yeah. like it was 
it's mad. I have it's goosebumps so cool. at the thought of it, yeah. just mm -hmm. thinking about yeah. it, because that moment is so deep. Yeah. It was class. It was. The, yeah. Like, I, I had a bit of... Um, obviously, I was in the stand in there, so I was a bit iffy on the V first and, the, like, approaching. But watching it, oh, my God. Like you said, the, the crowd erupted. Goosebumps, hairs yeah. up. I was like, oh, God, this is a It was when battle. we went from the V and connected yeah. as a line yeah. to, like, water. be, like, really solid. Yeah. Like, I, I was on the bench for that game, and when I walked off, I had to sit down because I was like, it literally <laughs> took my breath away because I was like, that was unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like I said, like, the, the, everyone in the crowd yeah, was reacting as yeah. well. It was like... Oh yeah, I can't. I can't, say, I can't describe. Yeah, it. the feeling. Yeah, it was insane. Talk to me about your journey to the World Cup because. Oh God. <laughs> is, it, is it still painful? Yeah, just thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, because you had to recover, and I mean, it was we, no yeah, one was sure whether you were going to make yeah, it. Yeah, it was really touching. What goal. was it? Uh, calf tear. Calf. Oh. So a couple of weeks before, well, about a month before. Mm. Um, yeah, I just went to do a sprint in training and. Yeah, just calf just went. Um, it was, we went to Canada just before it, yeah. so I still wasn't fit to go to Canada, but went out to continue rehab because we thought if I missed that like ten days of rehab with the with physios, well, I probably definitely wouldn't be. I wouldn't have been selected to go to New Zealand. Um, so it was just a push. It was hard work, great determination, just emotions everywhere. Just trying to get back fit and try and get some load through it. Um, yeah, it was quite, yeah, still a bit emotional. <laughs> yeah. well, is it because, because of how old you are? Mm. <laughs> and, and the sacrifices you've made? Yeah. Because there has been a lot. Yeah. So you're that generation of player for whom this was a really big, and it was postponed by a year as well. Yeah, that was tough as well, because like obviously during lockdown, I was like, oh my God, have I got another year in me to, to like at this level? Um, never been to a World Cup before either. So I always fell like short of it. So I th thought this is like my last chance. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so when, when that happened, I was like, no, nah, this is it, it's gone. So I had a lot of, a lot of tears in the build up, a couple of weeks and then it was that, that he got me as well, Johan, because he was like, he was going to make phone calls about not going selection and things like that. And my phone went and I was like, oh, my God, I'm not going. I was sat on the set. I was like, I don't know if I actually want to answer it because I was like, I don't know if I can hear it right now. Obviously, answered it because I can't leave him, <laughs> leave him <laughs> ringing either. And it was to tell me that I, he was going to take a chance and take me out, even though I still wasn't fully fit or raring to go, for, even for the first game. Um, yeah, so I'm just really like, well, I can't thank him enough for even giving me the chance and backing me to even go, because I got then to play against, um, got on the bench to play against New Zealand and Australia as well. So even to make the World Cup, yeah, it was just a highlight for me, just going through everything with the injury before. Um, yeah, and then to play in it just topped it off as well. But it wasn't my ideal of what I wanted and what I thought my World Cup would ever look like, but the fact I actually made it, yeah, it's just, well, I, can't, I get emotional about it. <laughs> yeah. And it's understandable because there's a quote here from your partner, Steph, um, dating back to a few seasons ago after some heavy losses yeah. that he put on Facebook because people were so critical of the way that the team were performing. Yeah. And he said, just a little insight on Wales women and the haters who badmouth how embarrassing they are. A normal day for Karen, being an international for over a decade, starts with the school run at 8.30. <laughs> Jacob is 10 now. Yeah, yeah. Work from 9 until 3, drive to Cardiff for training at 4.45, intense training, gym until 9, drive home from Cardiff, get home around 10, wash and dry training kit to do it all again the following day. 14-hour day, no recovery emotionally and physically drained and manages to be a hero and a fantastic mother to our eight-year-old. Support and applaud these women instead of putting them down. Yeah. Oh, hit me in the feelings then. <laughs> <I agree. laughs> <laughs> because you were missing out on time with your son every yeah. time you went to training. Yeah. It was a decision every day. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> we need to not look at each other. <laughs> yeah, it's... 
yeah, I'm just lucky I've got such good family, to be honest, because if it wasn't for them, I definitely wouldn't be able to do it, knowing that he's with family and not just, like, I had to put childcare and things like that. But, yeah, I'd drop him off in the morning, go to work, go to rugby. I'd get back so late that he'd be in bed by then anyway, so I wouldn't see him then until the next morning when I do the school run again, go back to work, rugby. Yeah, it's, yeah, he's lost out a lot of time with me as well. Um, but then we just had to make sure that on the days off that I had on the weekends that I made up for it, um, made sure I spend as much time together and stuff like that really. But he's really good as well. He understands like he's, like Steph tries to bring him everywhere. My mother does everything with him as well, brings him to all games. Like he came out to New Zealand for three weeks. He's come up to Scotland last weekend. He's hoping to go out to Italy and France. Like he's, yeah, we're trying to, especially now at this age, like when he's understanding a lot more, trying to include him a lot more in it as well. And you know, H J and things have always been good. Like if he's been unwell and not in school, or if it's in set days, holidays, she's always offering. Like if he needs to come up, if you're struggling for childcare, like there's no issues him coming up. And you know, like we'll we'll have him when you're training, and it's fine. Um, luckily, I have not to take her up on that. Like even though he'd love it, I know he'd be absolute carnage. <laughs> and yeah, it's yeah. like well, just look at it. It's bad enough with us running around. Yeah, it's like a massive playground, really, isn't it? All the, yeah. the tackle pads. But, <laughs> Yeah, he, he loves it now and he loves all the girls as well. So it's like seeing him on, after the pitch on Scotland, running around, trying to attack me after the game. <laughs> and I was like, just don't know now. But yeah, all the girls love him, everything. Yeah, he's, re he's growing into it now. He's understanding a lot more, but yeah, it was tough. Yeah, you know, making those sacrifices means yeah. that qualifying for a World Cup and being fit and selected. Yeah, because I was going through it like all these years, everything like, I can't fall short now like so close and then they, I was having little setbacks all the time which it is like a calf you've got to test it to know if you can do it and then you get set back so yeah I just thought I can't let this stop me like not after all everything I've given over the years this, this can't be the end because I thought if I didn't go probably well you might not have seen me in the red shirt this year mm. yeah I know she's on fire. Yeah. So Look at you now, girl. Say that she's playing outstanding at the moment. Yeah. And it just puts your performances and your partnership with Hannah and the way that you guys are at the moment yeah. really into perspective because yeah. it's not an overnight success. No, it's not. And, you know, like, I'm just one story of massive stories with the other girls as well. Like, you know, it's, you've got all the North Wales girls have been travelling for years, like all the sacrifice you girls have done with work and everything as well. So like, there's a lot of stories there of sacrifices other girls have made. So it's not, you know, it's not just me, I know that. But we all, well, we all love it, don't we? Like, otherwise we wouldn't be here doing it. But when we come in now, we make the most of it. And yeah, the, I think that's why it's good now with the, the pro contracts, with the time we have together, this, the off-field stuff, like you said, is so important because mm -hmm. that's when you get the connections and you really understand the players, how to speak to people, what they like, what they don't like. It's, it's massive having the off-field connections that you filter through into the game then on field. Uh, and just leading on from that, it's, it's, I think it's the off-field, what we do on the off-field that actually shows then on, yeah. on pitch. And, you know, like we, we go through so much and you get to know each other as people mm -hmm. rather than players. Yeah. And I, and I think that's really important to know each other as, as people mm. more so than players because the player, player will always be there but it's, yeah. it's getting to know that actual person. So, yeah, it's really allowed us to connect on, on different levels in that sense. Yeah. I love that you work in participation and basically bringing a wider variety of people into the game. Yeah. Because when I watch you, <laughs> I go, I'd like to play with her. <laughs> <laughs> you just have this exuberance that radiates off you, regardless of how tough and really stuck in you get, because you do. It's not just, it's not just tra la 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 tra trotting <laughs> through, but every time, like your energy is absolutely undeniable on the pitch. Have you just always been that person? I just I just love rugby. So I actually didn't start rugby until I was 17 years of age. So I found it a lot later in life. Um, but as soon as I played my first game, I was like, I found what I want to do. Like I played so many sports growing up, but I just couldn't find the one that I wanted to stick with. And my first game I ever played with Seven Sisters, um, my local rugby club, I, I just couldn't look back. I, it, it just made like, I felt like complete, which is weird, but um, yeah, 17, I played my first game and then I just couldn't look back. And I think what made me love the game more and working in, in the sport was 
I wanted to create opportunities for younger people. Like I didn't have the opportunities there when I was younger. That's why I was into it late. Some people were lucky enough to start it when they were a little bit younger. But um, not only like just getting more girls in rugby, but people with disabilities. Like there's opportunities out there. Like you, you know, you can adapt, adapt the game in so many ways that um, just gives people get get a ball in hand and, and just run around and have fun. And you know that is what the game's about at the end of the day. So it is a community sport. That's where it, that's where it started. And um, it's always good to, to give back to those as well. We say it a lot, but if you can't see it, you can't be it. Yeah. And you know that's a, that is a huge thing. And I think when we were probably a little bit younger and you know first getting into the game and things like we we didn't really see it as no. much. But now having professionalism, like it feels so good to be able to give back to to, to those yeah. people that you know have supported us as well. And yeah, it's huge. It's such big moments like that. Like just after games, like you know, just making the effort to go around and see all the girls that's come to watch our games. Yeah. Like it's, you know, I'm really all for inspiring the next generation because if we don't get people in the sport, like it could die off. And so like, yeah, like I'm hugely passionate about that. You know, like giving time back to them and little moments like that, giving your jersey, it makes someone's day. And it, you know, someone might not even know about it, but mm. that you've mm. made that one one person feel really special and. That, you know, that's what it's about, isn't it? I loved being at Cardiff Arms Park. I mean, the smoke, the red smoke, yeah. the fire <laughs> shooting up into Until the air. Until it comes into your face, yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> it out of that. I can't see it. Ride away, ride it, ride it. <laughs> My eyelashes are coming off. Just pay for these. They're expensive. Yeah, they are. I've spent a lot of time getting these on, right? It's a wrench, they've gone. <laughs> yeah, literally. The, mm. the, the fire shooting up in the air, the choir. I mean, I'm so I here for the choir. choir. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, literally it's the reason I come yeah. all the yeah. way to Wales. Oh, not for us. Yeah, okay, okay. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> quiet. She's quiet. She's not full. Yeah. Fee singing, obviously. Yeah. And the Thank choir. You. I mean, the rugby is also. They're just my backing singers, really, aren't they? <laughs> Get the girl a mic. Get the girl a mic. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> but they were singing during the game as well. I don't yeah. know if you guys heard them, but yeah. they were sitting behind us and they would constantly start up these hymns. Yeah. Yeah. And they would just start I picking up. That's yeah. a real Welsh thing, though. Like, yeah. like I'm this team I support in Scarlet, like from Tlatli, like we always used to sing and we watch rugby, we sing songs. And I think that is a real Welsh thing that like you get fans singing. Like even on the weekend, yeah. did you hear it in the yeah. crowd? Yeah. Our fans were singing in the crowd. It was amazing. Yeah. And I, I think that's one thing that makes Welsh rugby and Welsh fans so passionate is yeah. things like that like singing it's great and then afterwards everyone just ran onto the pitch I mean first oh it was God. just the kids oh yeah and then it was everyone I mean how many children were at that <laughs> game it was, it was actually it was crazy it was so well <laughs> we, did, we, we literally had our, happening yeah, like we had our team meeting and then two minutes later we were just surrounded yeah. by Boom. everyone like hello I feel like <laughs> one child them. ran and then all of them were like, yeah! yeah. 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 It's free for all! Go get them! Yeah. Do you know, I didn't actually realise how many people come on the pitch until there was a picture on oh, Twitter somewhere yeah. of an overview and I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, that's actually so many people. It was, it was crazy. It, it like, just reminded me back of like, when I was little, going to watch rugby, yeah. like the men's rugby, that's what you used to do, like yeah. at Charlie Park, you'd go on to Down the field, the like, well, yeah. yeah, you'd, wouldn't yeah. you? And then yeah. you'd all run on, and that, that's this year where it was like a flashback yeah. of like our childhood going to watch rugby. Yeah. But um, it was really nice, like, we you know, we spent a lot of time up there, but yeah. like, we literally waited until like the last fan left to make sure that everyone was seen. And it comes back to yeah. that, like, rewarding, giving back, you know, scenario. Um, yeah, it was really special, wasn't it? It, it was, was different. But it was, yeah. we, we didn't know what was well, happening. We didn't, yeah, we didn't it know. was we really special. Stood there, we were like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were like, we were like, we were like, we were like, <laughs> it, was, it was a beautiful moment yeah. Yeah, and it, it was, was just it good was. To, to watch it happen. Like I was on the sidelines, but it didn't take even me very long and I was down on the grass <laughs> as well. You the quiet was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I had FOMO and I just had to get stuck in. There, there might be video footage on somebody's phone of me also running around on the pitch like crazy. There were guys, th did you see the group of guys and the one in the wedding dress that seemed to be on a stag do? Were they over the other side? Because I think yes. I've seen them during the game actually. Like, That's I don't know notice. why I can't stop and see this them. This is now where we're at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, groups of yeah. mates, like 30 men, obviously wearing uh, hello, uh, uh, Hawaiian shirts, oh, and there was brilliant. one in a wedding dress with the sash on. Yeah. Coming to the game, <laughs> having not? a good time. That's it, it's not just like girls or females, is it? We, like, we want to put a show for everyone and yeah. everyone to enjoy it. And this groups of men come in and like you said, the kids came on, but it wasn't just kids, it was the parents coming on, yeah. adults coming on, wanting pictures, autographs, yeah. like it, it's, it's mad. It's yeah. mad to think it's not just girls and women, like it's yeah. everyone is by like watching it, enjoying it and we, yeah. 
yeah. it's just mad. Getting stuck in. Get, yeah. yeah. Now, speaking of getting stuck in, I'm sorry, we just have to quickly talk about Gloucester because um, I, need to, I need to hear more about the circus. Do they just talk about playing for Gloucester Hartbury all the time? I'd love to say yes, but to be honest, they're quite respectful oh, of, okay. of our feelings. Yeah, just so rub it in Give the them their like, like, water, <laughs> give yeah. it more to them. No, no, I want to hear about Mo. I'm not even bothered about the line. <laughs> <laughs> Mo is the ringleader of our yeah. circus. Tell us about the circus. 100%. <laughs> you can say more or less. Um, no, it's, it's just a great place to be, you know, and as corny as it sounds, only we say it, it, it is such a family environment. Like, yeah. I can't picture myself anywhere else. Like, it'd be tough to to move clubs because again like what we're building here like creating those friendships and things off the pitch like that just came so natural mm. at, at Gloucester like I remember my I think I came four years ago and like straight away you just welcomed into such a loving club and a big thing there as well like we like to get to know each other as people not just players and yeah. the performance side of things like off pitch like you know we do mm. we do so much and yeah, that's where things. we got uh, where we got the name of then the circus you know little antics on nights out yeah. and just just enjoying each other's company and um what yeah just really antics? appreciate it yeah <laughs> you put your phone in yeah. now girl <laughs> you know just go out and socialize um <laughs> Enjoy each other's company, have a few drinks. <laughs> no, it honestly, it's so good. Like, drinks don't even have to be involved no. and we're a circus. We're a very a lot dysfunctional. Of not, not yeah. Drinking, to be honest. We're, we're a very dysfunctional family, is how yeah. I would just describe Gloucester Harpery Gills. Yeah. She, um, when we were there, her coffee order is a cortado, which yeah. I think is 100% appropriate. Yeah, like L to a little tea. short yeah. and yeah, <laughs> packs a punch. Packs a punch, exactly that. What's your coffee order? Um, so a cortado sometimes or um, flat white. A flat white slash yeah. cortado drinker. You're deep within your coffee culture? Um, not as much as Mo. I like to go places with Mo because then I'm like, what's she getting? Yeah, I love whatever <laughs> Mo had, please. <laughs> um, but I do enjoy a coffee, definitely. She backseat drives other people when they're making coffee. She'll, she'll look and go, oh, no, no, I don't think you're doing that right. <laughs> I mean, she's got all the setup in her house she's as well, the coffee point. beans, the co proper, you know, machine and everything. She invites everyone over for a coffee in the mornings and things. So it, it is great. But um, yeah, she'll like to make her own, put it that way, because she knows she'll get a good, a good coffee. <laughs> Who's the aficionado over here in the veil? I think it's Gwen. Gwen it? Crab. Yeah, I'd say Gwen, so. Gwen Crab, she likes yeah. a coffee. Mm, is it, yeah. yeah. She's good as well. CP's got good coffee awesome. art, mate. Yeah, oh, she, she has. Yeah, she's been working she's on that. She's good in the coffee art. Yeah. But Gwen Crab, I think, is solid coffee. It's more the coffee. coffee. To, yeah. to be fair, I think it's because in all fairness, Gwen Crab doesn't give anyone else a chance. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, fair. So, yeah. Fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but she definitely likes to take that responsibility. I'm pretty sure before World Cup um, pre-season, didn't she bring her coffee machine in? Or was that just for rehabbers? Or I'm pretty sure she brought her oh, actual big coffee machine in. The like rehabbers the have their own coffee machine. <laughs> well, Gwen brought it in, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I can't quite remember, but I'm pretty sure Gwen set be it up. It would be Gwen crafting. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, she she's really happy to make like people coffee. coffees. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't complaining, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Not very saying much. no, thank you anytime <laughs> yeah. soon. Exactly. That's one thing about New Zealand. They love a flat white. I feel like, didn't yeah. they come up with a flat white? Oh, did they? I didn't Or really Australia that. Oh, no. or somewhere. I have no idea. It was they weird. They are known for their coffee, but controversial. I have never been asked what size flat white yeah. I want. So in that New Zealand, bizarre. they have like small, medium and large flat whites. I thought that was insane. I thought, you know, flat yeah. white is a flat white. It comes as it comes and I, 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 you're good to go. I was like, I don't understand the question. I, I was like, <laughs> what size? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but actually, we did find out eventually that in New Zealand, um, if you do want a smaller version of a flat white, it's called a tulip. So I, oh, I just ended cute. up um, having tulips. A tulip? Yeah. Mm, that in Fangaree, is it? Yes, in yeah, Fangaree, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tulip. Yeah, there we go. Bangry, I'm not bangry. sure actually if it was because of the shape uh, mug the mug that ended up cool, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, every yeah, day, so mm. a little tulip. Every day is a school day. <laughs> the reason yeah. I don't order a flat white is because there's just not enough in that cup. Yeah, it's I like too a flat for me. Just it's longer. <laughs> yeah, but I, I just need a bit more bang yeah. for my buck. But maybe it's because it's ridiculously expensive in London. Yeah. They suddenly they want like a million rands for a, <laughs> for a cup of tea. You must never convert <laughs> these things. <laughs> Speaking of a million rands. You guys trained against my people recently, the South African girls. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. And it had a little singing session afterwards. Did you join in? I actually wasn't well, so I wasn't there. So oh, I missed yeah, it. Yeah, oh. I wasn't well 
that week, so I stayed at home for that. I know, so I missed it. But I did watch it back, so I <laughs> see it happen. They um they bring such good vibes. Yeah, the energy's out there. Like, to be fair to them, they, they turned up they a turned little up late. Turned up late, <laughs> got off the bus, boombox on the shoulder. <laughs> Just yeah. boogieing and dancing, and I thought, you're a vibe. I, I, I love it. I was, like, I was like, can you imagine if we turn up Monday late as a squad, your ones are waiting, and we turn up for the boombox yeah. dancing our way in. Oh, See if he's fine with that. He's so much trouble. Yeah. 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 No, they have a great vibe about them, a great aura, yeah. and um, yeah, great little competition to go against before, yeah, um, it was good. before Six Nations. You guys have your um, own recent recruit from the Southern Hemisphere. Kay Williams left behind an entire life and a partner in New Zealand to move here wanting to play for Wales, also now going to be playing in the red and white yeah. at Gloucester Heartbreak. Yeah. What an amazing testament to the kind of culture you guys bu have built, but also the deep roots that, and the appeal of playing in the Welsh shirt. Yeah. I mean, that, that clip of her wiping away the tears when she put the shirt on in the chain. Well. Although, sorry, I, 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 I like to be a bit controversial. Here we go with the spice. I told yeah. her. You've just put your brand new shirt on your first game day and you want to put blood, sweat and literal tears into it. I was like, you could have picked up a top that you had in front of you to wipe away your tears. No, she chose her match shirt and I thought, there we go, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, that was a really special moment. Yeah. And, you know, we touched on earlier about her dad coming onto the pitch yeah. and things oh, yeah. like, um, yeah, it's amazing just to see like the, the, the growth that we have as a squad as well. People coming in from, from like you say, all over the place as well and um, testament to what we're creating here yeah. in the squad. But um, yeah, Kate, uh, Kate is a great addition, great mm. addition to the team and, and to us at Gloucester as well. You know, she brings good vibes. She, she's hard. She's a great player, mm. um, great person. So mm. yeah, really happy to have her on board yeah, um, as a new sign in. And then this weekend, it's the Singapore Sevens. Now, uh, your mate Jazz <laughs> is uh, just uh, out there absolutely <laughs> shining with GB Sevens, which is just yeah. phenomenal Crazy. to see. I think she's actually got faster as well after watching on the weekend. How? Just I just don't her. understand. Her legs go in. Is that even possible? I know. I know. That's why I was like, we were watching it. We were like, her legs are like Meow. going like this. Her head goes quick. back <laughs> and then she's arches gone. the back. No yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's mad. I, I just don't know why they're feeding them up there. <laughs> it's she been, is going faster. It's been brilliant to see though. They've caught up with Ireland. It's them, Ireland and Fiji, Fiji now. Yeah, battling yeah. it out. Mm. So it's really hotting up. Um, Scars is all over our WhatsApp group going, <laughs> guys, have you noticed the GB7 girls? They're yeah. in with a shot. They're playing yeah. for Olympic qualification here. It's class. That's brilliantly yeah. exciting yeah. to see. And they can take confidence from this weekend just gone or yeah. last weekend because it was unreal. Like even winning matches five nil, it just shows how much effort they're putting into the games. Like for a sevens match to end five nil, yeah. like oh, I just can't even imagine. Oh my god, the energy, the the want, the will. Well, you've seen Rona crying after mm -hmm. a try as well. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it's just they're giving everything into it, and they got rewarded on that yeah. weekend. So it's great. They're really living their dream, yeah. aren't they? And you know, Jazzy is always always wanted to go yeah, to Olympics, she, she, it. she yeah. done it. And then it was like, well, let's go to another one. And yeah, yeah it's great to see our friends living their dreams yeah. and being able to support them and because they're doing so well. Um, yeah. yeah, it means a lot, actually. I mean, we're gutted, <laughs> she's not here with yeah. us uh, <laughs> putting on a Welsh shirt, but um, no, it is really great to see them living their dream. Yeah. And her success is your success. 100%, yeah. 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 Now, speaking of success, England, they're heading here shortly. That's what you're prepping for at the moment, yeah. right? Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> indeed getting intense should be a good game I'm very excited you know I think we know it's always tough against Scotland and Ireland like they've always been battles back and forth it could go either way but obviously from previous results with with England normally people would just say straight away it's going to be a one-sided game yeah. but I think for us like we're excited to, to actually challenge ourselves and see you know where we're actually at yeah, as a squad to go to go against these girls that have been professional a little bit longer um, you know throughout the Six Nations there's many injuries and things going on as well they're blooding new players through their yeah. system so it should be a really really good match I'm and like I say so. just a realistic um like goal you know to see to see where we're at as a squad and to see how we can compete with the best in the world yeah we yeah. had a little chat with Mo last week about Kira Bevan <laughs> and then it ended up in her telling us about Alex Callender um, and tying her shoelaces. Oh. <laughs> so funny. And her yanking her <laughs> scrunchie <laughs> off and almost yeah. getting, <laughs> getting a disciplinary. Um, uh, who are the people on the white side um, who do these naughty things? It's time for you to Ooh. out someone as well. Come on, return the favour. I mean, Mo can't say much. She's pretty, <laughs> she's cheeky, do you know what I mean? <laughs> 
Like, when <laughs> yeah, you play against point. her, she, she's in your year, do you know what I mean? She is all, she's a lot of chat, isn't she? I wouldn't yeah. trust her, you know? Do you know what she's going to do? Do you know where she's going? <laughs> <laughs> Better catch up with her sooner rather than later. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, I don't know what else, actually. No, Come on, because oh, I, I hear you guys pack quite a, a punch when it comes to some of the chirps out there. Yeah, I love a little woo! I don't know. Yeah, woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you like it, it's in the back, we're all right. <laughs> What's I actually can't think of yeah. anyone stand out um, for England. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think no one like Alcala. No. Yeah, <laughs> Al Alcala's topped it. Like yeah. She's the gravy. queen of like... Yeah. I can remember we were in, I think it was France or Italy last year and she went to the front row and she was oh, trying to yeah. look and they wouldn't untie like they were so tight she was yanking on them <laughs> and they wouldn't come down and the front was just looking at her like <laughs> we're at the scrub and they're looking down like what on earth is she doing yeah, <laughs> she gets away with it yeah she is. yeah shameless yeah, yeah that, that is a great absolutely yeah, that's great absolutely just yeah. going for it yeah, yeah. 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 wouldn't change her though no, no yeah. wouldn't change her She's glad you saw my team. Yeah, <laughs> I was just thinking exactly the yeah. same. One of those people you're glad to have on your side. Yeah, 100%. Cecilia, Alex. Alcals. 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 Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you'll share jazz with GB7s, but only because yeah. you have to. Yeah. It's only because she wants to as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's for her yeah. respect yeah. for yeah. decision. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what would be good enough for you against England? Ooh. Definitely bonus point. Yeah. yeah. Um, closing the gap, you know, like last year, we had you no know, two heavy defeats, and I think it's really important for us to make sure that gap is closing and we come away with points from this fixture. Yeah. Um, we've really set the, the platform and the standard and set the bar high for ourselves these last two games, and you know we don't want to let that slip. I back that yeah. bonus point definitely. Try and get a bonus point, close the gap. Yeah. Score, I mean, get, score some tries like. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I score, mean, last year yeah. you look back to the first 20 minutes. If I'm yeah. honest, like I thought Wales. We're, yeah, we're pretty much on top of them, you know, we were rattling them in the line out, like really disrupting their ball. Um, unfortunately, we had we had a really sin serious injury yeah. that I think just like stopped the momentum stopped and then sadly we just couldn't quite get it back as quick as England did. Um, but I definitely think like we want to look for that fast start yeah. against England um, and like Fisa get some points on the board and um, yeah, just finish off opportunities, yeah. however that may look on the, on, on the scoreboard. But um, yeah. yeah. Re really, really put our attack t t to, um, to the test. I think if you compare the place we're at now compared to last Six Nations, worlds apart. And I think, um, yeah, it's really exciting. Like, it's going to be a really physical battle up front. You know, they've got a really strong forwards pack mm -hmm. and they've got really fast backs. But I think the performances that we've put in the last two weeks, I think we can really match that. So I think it's going to be a really exciting game. Yeah. When you say worlds apart, what's <coughs> different? Can you I break it down? I think, like, physically is massive. Like. Yeah. We've really worked hard, <coughs> um, like in a conditioning perspective. Like, you know, our nutritionist has said that we've lost the amount of fat of like a baby hippo, and we've gained the muscle of a bear uh, as a squad. Um, and we have been massively on top of that. And more so, anything I think mentally and like a confidence perspective, because we've got so much contact time. We're working really hard as a group. We're tighter than ever. Like, you when you know someone's got your back and someone's backing you 100%. That's only going to build your confidence and I think that's really reflecting our performances yeah. so definitely both <coughs> sides of those two things I think is yeah it's, it's a different. trust thing as well isn't it yeah. like we you know I, well I'll happily say like I can trust everyone no matter <coughs> who's on the pitch whoever the 23 is like we'll go out there and do a good and, and do a good job and I think previously like maybe that belief wasn't there before but actually mm. now that's bubbling that's building um, there's belief in the squad and it's just exciting to see what we can do yeah. Well, you're the girl who talked up a Gloucester Hotbury <laughs> league win, so, oh I mean, gosh. like, bring us all that confidence. 100%. <laughs> bring it. I mean, I've said it before, I'm a competitive player, you know, we, we said about top three, but why not try and get that top spot? Definitely top two, you know, I, I mean, there's no reason why we can't. The belief is there, you know, the ability's there. It's just staying on top and putting that yeah, performance out. Performance so. Yeah, girl. High five. <laughs> I love that energy. <laughs> Italy, Ireland in Parma <coughs> on Saturday after you guys. I'm going Oof, to see I, I would Italy, say Italy yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then France, Scotland on Sunday in Vaughan. That is a tough assignment. Yeah. 
France. France. Okay. Go France, but <coughs> Scotland will give them a good game. Good battle, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For sure. Considering the way yeah. Scotland came out yeah, against yeah, you guys. Defense attack. Yeah, they'll definitely give them a good game. And mm. the threat that you said they posed and how yeah. physical they were. Yeah. They don't give up. It, it is an 80 minute game yeah. in Scotland. Yeah. Like, you cannot afford to switch off because they will literally yeah. keep coming for you until that final whistle. The result. last 10, 15 yeah. minutes now, they, yeah. they don't stop hammering. And especially coming off two losses as well, they'll want to make more of a point. Mm. Um, especially like they wanted yeah. to target our game, they'll definitely be taking that anger into that next one. Yeah. If they can control their emotions again. Yeah. yeah. When you look at reports that England have now sold more tickets for their home encounter against France, there was a record attendance <coughs> against Ireland. It's on an upward trajectory, it's which insane. is what we yeah. absolutely it's love seeing. Yeah. And it is just really really inspiring to see that number of tickets being sold for the England game because you go, it's happening. Yeah. It's real. Yeah, so we're, we're the change, do you know what I mean? Like we're living through this change and like I think when we went back to talk about sacrifice we spoke about earlier, like moments like this is why it's worth it. Like people are willing to, you know, pay money to come and watch us, they're giving up their time to come and watch and then, you know, if we can play in sold out stadiums then Gosh, you come out there and you've jersey about singing the anthem to everyone singing it back at you. Yeah. There are moments you You'll have you to sing a little bit louder from. then, wouldn't you? I was oh, say. <laughs> Challenge accepted. You, you wait. <laughs> the the on cam yeah. will be right there. In the <laughs> on my face. <laughs> uh, what are we going for on the nails ahead of that? Oh, gosh. <sighs> well, I always go for red, definitely through campaign, but I gotta say, my new la nail lady's got a glittering pink call on my name, oh. so we might be going pink, but. All pink. Stop but, it. Well, Why don't you do a, like a clash and do pink and red? Yeah, the clash, see? Clash. The word clash. Yeah, let's do it. Go bold. You do have a red scrunchie and then a pink bow. bow. So it could go with could the nails. Yeah. It could match up. Do it. What do you Back wanna yourself. see? I, I really love this cherry red with the little glitter. Yeah, the glitter. Oh, I've always got to have a glitter nail. A lovely cherry I've red. I've always got to have a glitter nail. <laughs> I'll do my own when you also will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just spot on to that. That's me like completely <laughs> messing me like, yeah, oh, yeah it's red. I've got some of us on my weird blood. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm going on. <laughs> She's never going to have red nails ever again. Yeah, I'm coming in white. White nails. Oh, no, no, I can't have white nails. No, I was going to no. say we're playing no. England. No. no. Oh, that backfired. Just grab that. Yeah, yeah. Any yeah. suggestions? Hit us up in the comments. Yeah. Section. What should Fiona have? <laughs> Needs to be oh, before brilliant. Wednesday, okay? <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for leading us into your house, into the barn, into this really sacred space in Welsh rugby um, and for just being absolute superstars the way you are. <laughs> no, thank you for having us on yeah, the great chat. Thank you. The level of ownership and endeavour and ambition here is unbeatable and you guys have something beautiful bre brewing. Yeah, we're on a special yeah. journey, aren't we? Are. we? Yeah, we're building. We are. And I'm glad you are here for it. <laughs> so we can't wait for you to join us at Cardiff Arms Park for Wales versus England. Come, come on down. It's going to be fun. Uh, we might even let Skaz in on that day, even though she wasn't allowed here. Uh, this has been The Good, The Skaz and The Rugby brought to you by Vodafone. It's a Folding Pocket production produced by the brain in charge of it all, Shira Kilgallen.